In this video, we will do a difference quotient limit example. So the problem says let f of t be the square root of 2t plus 1, and I want to evaluate the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So this fractional thing is what's called the difference quotient. And we've seen these before, but just without the limit in front. So the first thing that I might think of is, I see a limit, let's try plugging in. If I plug in 0, I'll get f of x minus f of x over 0, because I plug in 0 for the h. And that'll give me 0 over 0. And that's an indeterminate form, so I need to simplify. OK, so let's think about how we'll simplify this. So we have the limit as h approaches 0. f of x plus h means, well, whatever's in parentheses, plug that in for my variable. In this case, plug it in wherever t is. So I'll get the square root of 2 times x plus h, getting plugged in for the t, and then plus 1, minus f of x. So this time I plug in x for my variable. So I get the root of 2x plus 1, and then all over h. So when we have a square root and then minus something, or a square root plus something, and I need to simplify, I can try to multiply by the conjugate. And this is a technique from algebra. So I gotta think back to algebra class for this one. And I'm gonna first write out what the conjugate is and then talk mathematically about why is that gonna help. Okay, so we are gonna multiply this fraction on the top and on the bottom by something. It's gotta be the same thing because I don't want to change the value of this expression. So the conjugate is, focusing on this uh, root term on the top, it's square root of, and if I distribute the 2, I'll get 2x plus 2h plus 1. Basically, I'll write the exact same term, except change this negative sign to a positive. The sign on one of these terms ends up getting changed. Either the sign in front of the first root term or the sign in front of the second root term, one of them needs to be changed. So I'm going to change this negative sign to a plus, and then root 2x plus 1, but only change that sign. And then multiply by the same thing on the bottom, because whatever I multiply the top by, got to multiply the bottom by the same thing. So why is this going to be helpful? Well, on the top of the first fraction, I have something minus something. Something of the form a minus b. And then when I multiply by the conjugate, I'm multiplying it by a plus b. And that's difference of squares, just factored. So if I multiply it out, we get a squared minus b squared. So if we do that multiplication now, we will get the limit as h approaches 0. And if I distribute up the top like that, my a squared is, my a is root 2x plus 2h plus 1. That's my a. That's going to be squared. And then minus my b squared. And my b is that other term, root 2x plus 1. And that's going to get squared. The squares are going to cancel out the root. That's why this is going to be so nice. On the bottom, I'm going to keep it as h times the first root plus the second root. It turns out that'll be helpful for seeing why stuff will cancel later. So the conjugate was really, really useful for the numerator in terms of getting rid of those square roots. On the denominator, I'm going to keep it as it is, because it'll make it better to see that cancellation. All right, so I've just copied down what I have, giving myself some more room. Now let's multiply out, let's square out the terms on the top. Squaring that root will just leave me with 2x plus 2h plus 1. And then we'll have minus all of this next term. So I'll put a parenthesis, and when I square it, I get rid of that root, and I'll get 2x plus 1. And then on the bottom, we have h times that first square root. I'm running out of room here a little bit, so I'm just going to write it like this, plus the root of the next term. All right, now let's continue to simplify. We get the limit as h approaches 0. And when I distribute this negative, we are going to get negative 2x minus 1. OK, so this equals the limit as h approaches 0. And on the top, I can cancel the two x's, I can cancel the 1's, and I'm left with 2h. 
On the bottom, I'm left with h times the first root, 2x plus 2h plus 1, and then plus the second root, 2x plus 1. And now notice something nice happens. This h cancels with that h. That's really why I didn't want to distribute that h out on the bottom. I mentioned it would be easier to see what cancels later when I don't distribute that. Okay, cool. So now that that h is canceled, now let's try plugging in. So we get the limit. Well, actually first, let's just simplify this. When I cancel the h, I'll get 2 over that square root of 2x plus 2h plus 1 plus the square root of 2x plus 1. We've seen before sometimes that when I cancel out a term completely from the denominator, I gotta remember that domain restriction, that h is not allowed to be zero because that makes the denominator zero. But like, uh, with a limit, when it says that h is approaching zero, that already implies that h is not equal to zero. It just means that h is close to zero, but for the limit, you're not actually allowed to be equal to that number. So for that reason, I don't need to write down that domain restriction. All right, so now let's plug in. We get two on the top. On the bottom, I'll get square root of, first I'll get two x plus one because the two h term just becomes zero. And then plus another root two x plus one. So I get two plus, and then something plus something is two of that something. So I get two root two x plus one on the bottom. Now I can cancel twos and get one over root two x plus one. And that is our answer. So we will be doing a lot of examples of limits of difference quotients like this when we talk about the definition of a derivative later in this chapter. In terms of our goals for this section, we finished goal three, doing a limit of a difference quotient example.